What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Let's talk sniper in Mass Effect Andromeda. And I don't mean where you sit back spraying down your target like you're using an overpowered assault rifle hoping it'll die eventually. I'm talking more of the one shot, one kill mentality. Where if it's not a boss, it should go down with one good headshot. Even through full shields, even on insanity difficulty. One shot, one kill. And yes, even those asshole cat with the miniguns, or those ones that go invisible with the shotguns, even those guys. One shot, one kill. We did manage to achieve that, and I'll show you how I got there. So first, we go with the obvious profile, and that is, of course, Infiltrator. Everything has synergy with our gun. Everything we do here is designed to make our sniper hit like a truck. And so what we get here is a nice weak spot or headshot bonus and then that tech recharge speed, which is really what we're going for. The more often we can use cloak and energy drain, the more often we can take advantage of the damage buff that we get from it. That applies to both our gun and energy drain, depending on how we set up cloak, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, as for the turret, which is kind of like my third skill, this is more of a passive. If your turret is nearby, it gives you a 30% tech recharge speed, which is huge. And then if you set it up to shoot cryo ammo, it primes targets for you and weakens their armor. So now we have a shield stripper in energy drain, and we have a turret that helps weaken the armor of whatever we're shooting at. Works out great. Now, energy drain is great because it's a detonator and a primer. It strips enemy shields and adds it to your own shields. And having full shields and full health is going to play into this build also. Remember, every skill that we're using here all has synergy with everything we're doing. Everything feeds everything else. And it essentially all ends up boosting the damage of our gun. Now, this is, this is really, really important. Combat Cloak here at the end, what it does is it gives an extra two seconds of, of damage buff after you use a power or attack. And so the combo is basically once our turret is up helping our recharge speeds and helping us soften up whatever target we're shooting at, you cloak an energy drain, then shoot. And what the energy drain is obviously helps strip their shields and primes or detonates the target you're shooting at, and then your sniper should essentially finish them off. And I found that if it's not a boss, it's going to go down with one good headshot. Now, if you get a body shot, uh, not necessarily. The advantage with this build is having a little bit of accuracy. We're sniping here. You're going for weak spot bonuses, headshot bonuses. And if you get those, you're going to find that you do a devastating amount of damage because everything is geared towards boosting the damage of your gun and taking advantage of weak spots. Headshots on the kit. Some of those robots and stuff have funky other... It's usually a glowing spot that you can find. Some, it's harder to hit on some than others. I will uh, show you a, a sequence where I fight an architect at the end of this video, and it gives a, a good example of, of cloak damage bonus, uncloaked shots, um, weak spot shots, body shots, and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was a slightly lower level fight, so it was kind of like as we were uh, not quite done developing our character, but we had most of our skills in place, and I thought it was a good example of just about everything. Because the remnant, the robots can be harder to take down with their weak spots than, say, like the cat or some raiders, which are obvious. Hit them in the head, you know? Simple. Okay, now on our tech tree, I stopped at 116 points. Everything else after that, goes into combat. What we need is 116 points in both combat and tech to unlock the sixth rank of our infiltrator profile. And what that does is it gives us our max bonuses from our profile. Everything else should go into combat for this reason, is each point put into combat raises the damage of your sniper rifle. That's key. And also your, your weak spot or headshot damage as well. So it's basically double dipping. You really play like a rogue, essentially, as you get to double dip with your sniper. Now check this out. This battlefield assist module. We're going to put this in our sniper. We'll talk about our sniper in a second. What this does is it gives us a 20% bonus as long as our health and shields are full. Now shields aren't near as much a problem as keeping the health full. If you take shots, especially on insanity difficulty, that eat into your health, you're going to lose this bonus. Keep Korra along with you. Once you unlock her tier 6 skills... She has one that every time she uses shield boost, she gives you back health also. You can be at half health and she can, she can pop off shield boost twice and get you back to full health. And she will spam that often. As long as you're in combat, she's going to spam that every time it cools down. She's going to use it automatically. She uses it like Cassandra uses Blessed Blades in Dragon Age Inquisition. She just, she just spams it. And it's great for you. It's great for everybody because it helps your, your other teammate as well. Uh, secondary weapon is irrelevant. I don't think I pulled out my pistol three times in an entire playthrough. Uh, once or twice just for funs. 
um, you can afford to bring along a pistol or secondary weapon. Once you get into higher levels and you get higher tiered guns that have reduced weight, you can afford to carry those weapons without um, investing anything into carry weight. So you can afford to have a little more spare ammo. I think on one of my skills in the combat tree, you'll see that I still had uh, my, I think it was sniper rifle weight, minus 15% or something. I don't think it would be necessary now. You've also have ultra light material mods that you can put in your sniper, which helps. But um, that, that give you a few extra rounds. I haven't found ammo to be a problem with this build. If you're killing everything with one or two shots, then ammo isn't really a big deal. There's ammo dumps everywhere. Uh, even in the long sequences, when you're leading up to a boss fight, when you're fighting wave after wave of enemy, there's there's ammo boxes here and there. And if you're taking down enemies with one or two shots, there's not so many enemies that you can't stay in ammo. So I have I never found that to be a problem. I think I ran out of ammo twice in the whole playthrough, you know, and then it wasn't hard to go find a box somewhere. Now, um, we'll get back to our sniper rifle in a second. The armor I picked, in this case, it's called, what, the Skirmisher Armor. There's also one that's called, I think, Deadeye, and you can buy it. I prefer to make the armor because you can put in augments. And what I prefer to do here is use the tech cooldown rather than tech damage. Sure, you could boost your shield drain damage a little bit, but being able to use it more often is much more beneficial than it being just slightly stronger. So I found that putting the cooldown augments in my armor and then saving gun damage augments for my sniper was the way to go. Now, with the sniper, we had that battlefield assist module. Everything else is the kinetic coils because you just want to just raise the base damage of your weapon, period. And then your weak spot or headshot bonuses feed off of that, okay? Now, this armor set, it has built-in weak spot bonus and even the chest piece gives you, oh, I think spare ammo, which is nice. It's, it's always great to have more ammo, right? Um, this was the ideal set. Now, if you're thinking... There's also a cat set that gives you a gun damage bonus. My thinking was this, is that weak spot bonus was better because uh, let's say you had a 7% bonus on your arms, for example, between your weapon damage and your weak spot damage. I'd rather have 7% of, say, 5,000 than 7% of 1,000. Now, speaking of damage, uh, talking about snipers, the Ishere, which is the sniper rifle that I developed here, it is, hands down, the strongest sniper that I found in the game, up to this point. Maybe there will be some DLC guns that come out later that are strong. Who knows? I, I had initially planned with going with the single-shot Widow. That's kind of like an old favorite of mine. But they they basically phased it out. It has fewer augment slots than the Ishere, so less damage there. Um, it also has lower damage than the Ishere and does not have built-in armor penetration. It's supposed to be able to shoot through a tank, but you can't shoot through a wooden box with the thing. So the Widow has essentially become obsolete. Now, the Black Widow, which some of you might be fond of, is even worse. Believe it or not, the Ishere does almost twice the damage as the Black Widow. And true enough, it's only a single-shot rifle, but that's what sniping's about. is to take out a target with one hit rather than having to shoot them two or three times and hoping you get off all those shots and get lucky and get a headshot in there somewhere type of thing. The Ishere is slightly lighter than the Widow, and I believe it's slightly lighter than the Black Widow too. I think the Black Widow and the Widow are the same, pretty sure. But it does much more damage, it's a bit more accurate, has a slightly quicker reload time, and it's just it's just better. It's It, it looks a little willy-foo-foo as far as the way it looks, kind of Hello Kitty kind of looking sniper, but I'll be damned if it doesn't hit like a truck. And so they've essentially made the uh, the Widow rifles secondary. And that's a shame. I, I hope they change that one day. I hope they patch that, uh, buff them a little bit, at least give them built-in armor penetration, which they should have because they're anti-material rifles. It, it, it's it's kind of obvious that they should be able to at least shoot through a fern or a wooden box, but no, they can't. So the Ishere is the way to go from what I've found. I haven't found anything better. So develop that as you go. Um, essentially, it allows you to um, research the next, the next tier Ishere as you level up. I think you need to be level, say, 50 to unlock tier, I think it's 6 or 7. And it kind of goes down from there. So, like, when you're level 30, you can probably unlock, what, rank 4 or 5. You know, and it goes something like that. But kind of keep up with the Joneses as you go along building your character. Occasionally go back and, and level up your gun. Now, if you break down your gun for materials, basically um, deconstruct it, you will get your augment back. So you don't have to keep making or finding a new augment each time you go to make a weapon, 
you will get your augment back each time you break it down. You may not get all the materials you put into it back, but who cares? I mean, materials are everywhere. Just go scan some planets and look around for rocks. I mean, not a big deal. It's the augments. Those can be sometimes hard to find. These battlefield assist modules, I did wind up coming up with a couple of them through my playthrough. Strongly recommend the cryopod perk. Um, I think it's under military that goes and finds loot caches. It's like an advanced something or another. But anyway, loot boxes will pop up on your map. Uh, it's under the military pods. Unlock that because you will find an augment in every single loot cache that you, that you uncover. And there's quite a few of them on each map. Each world you go to discover, you'll see these little treasure chest looking symbols. Also unlock the cryopod, I believe it's under science, uh, that gives you an extra augment slot in your weapon. Being able to put an extra kinetic coil on your sniper raises your damage by 3%. Well, if your sniper's doing around 1,500 damage, that's pretty significant. 10% of that would be 150, so 3% of that is about 50 extra points of damage with, with each kinetic coil you put in. Can't knock it. Extra damage is always good. And so there's, uh, there's a sniper I was using, which is probably what y'all were most interested in, and then the armor set. And I found stacking the weak spot bonus along with the weak spot bonus that you get from your, your passive profile, which is infiltrator, and then anything you get from dumping all your extra points into combat. That, that really is kind of key. Get your, get your tech up there around 116 um, minimum. So you can unlock this, the, the sixth tier of the Infiltrator perk, and then everything else goes into combat. Like I said, you'll need 116 points in each. And the, the Assassin, the Sniper, is a, a combat tech specialist. So I wouldn't put anything into biotics on this one. Any points put into biotics would be essentially wasted as points that you could have put into combat to raise the damage of your Sniper. Now, when you get to much, much higher levels, where essentially your combat tree is full, then where do you put your points? I'd throw them into tech and start raising your tech damage and your tech cooldowns. All right, you can start, uh, you know, spamming your, your, your tactical cloak even more and stuff like that. Anyway, so I hope that gives you a good idea. You can go back and you can see exactly where I put my skills and stuff. Um, keep in mind, at higher levels, Sniper rifle weight and secondary or even third weapon weight won't be as important because higher tiered weapons weigh less and you may find that uh, You can invest in ammo instead of weight on say your sniper rifle tree or, or whatever your pistol tree or your assault whatever you're using um, But just make sure that none of those break into your cooldown and you'll see it under your when you're actually equipping your loadout it'll show you if you've got a recharge penalty going based on your weapon weight, uh, you start at 100% recharge, and then if you if you go over on your weight, it's basically anything over 30 pounds, I believe, then you'll start eating into your recharge time, and you'll start slowing down your powers. And believe me, you want to use your tactical close as much as possible. It's somewhere between a 75 and 90% um, damage buff to your sniper, and it's somewhere between, what, an 80 and 100% damage buff to your powers. So that's pretty significant. And if you can use it essentially all the time, by the time you're done reloading, your tactical cloak is ready to go again. By the time you cloak, your energy drain is ready to go again. And so you energy drain, and you've got about a two-second window to get your shot off. So scope in, and yes, you can use energy drain while you're scoped in. You can hit your bumper button while you're scoped, and you will energy drain whatever you're aiming at. Just a little FYI. So it's a really good working combo, and it's really as simple as that. Like I say, it's geared towards making your gun hit like a truck. When you can essentially one or two shot the legs on an architect to get it to uh, go into its next pattern of attacks, uh, I think you're doing all right. Uh, seem seem pretty significant to me. And there you go. So I'll leave you with this, and I'm going to get out of here. I hope you have fun with this. If you uh, watched the stream, you saw how uh, brutally effective this was at times, at least in my opinion. I don't know. There's not a stronger build out there, but this is uh, this is what I came up with. So. Anyway, hope, if nothing else, I hope it gives you guys some ideas, whether you follow it to the T or not. But just remember, the skills that I pick specifically, along with the equipment, they all have synergy with one another. They all feed into one another, and they are focused on one thing, and that's to make your weapon hit as, as hard as possible, at least as hard as I can get it to go. All right, so you all take care, and I will see you on the next one. Maybe, we, uh, maybe we'll work on an Adept or a, or a Sentinel. Who knows? More builds to come. This game is great, and it's, it's almost endless options on the way you can... Um, mix and match your powers and the skills and abilities to come up with all kinds of different stuff. 
But uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope you guys are too. Anyway, until later, y'all take care. Bye-bye. Interface. 